Hello and welcome to Daytona Beach, Florida. Welcome to the Ocean Center Arena and welcome to the official Strongman Games 2021. It has been 740 days since we've seen the official Strongman Games happen back in 2019 for the obvious reasons, because of a lockdown, but we are back. And for the next three days, we have a festival of strength in front of us. Hundreds of top strong men and strong women all competing from over 20 countries. This is set to be an absolute belter. Nine titles on the line and to talk us through all of the action over the next 72 hours. Big Lars, a.k.a. Lawrence Charlie, how are you, my friend? I'm very well and extremely excited to be here. This is an absolutely epic event. I've never seen so many athletes at an event before. Lots of organization has gone into making this event happen. Obviously, we've had many things that have happened over the last year, but the team have put on hours and hours of work to make this happen. All the athletes are ready. I've just been out in the backstage. There's nerves out there, as, as you would expect. Uh, but we're going to see some incredible performances new world champions to be decided and potential big stars for the future of world strongest man of giants live some of the the best athletes have come through this format and i'm really looking forward to watching and seeing the performances that we see from these gentlemen and ladies talking about performances very shortly we'll be hearing the national anthem by Gillian cook who's in the under 64 kilo category herself so she'll be performing the national anthem and then we'll have probably about 15 20 minutes before she's then competing herself now we have six events spread over the three days, two events on each day. Today we're focusing on log press and car walk. What can we look forward to specifically with the log press, Lars? Well, we have Zadrina Zaviskas competing yes. in the Masters yeah. today and obviously one of the greatest log lifters of all time. He looks massive. I saw him backstage. He looks like he's come in this meaning business. So Zadrunas is here. Going to get to see him on the log, which is going to be... It's always a pleasure to watch Zadrunas on the log. I'm excited to see some of the new faces. I know there's some athletes that have really upped their standard in the log press. And the way they're doing it in this contest, they only have to clean the log once. So it's one clean to the chest and then press as many times as possible, which is a little different to some other shows. So I think we could see some decent numbers. I think we're going to have a real mix. I think some athletes will really struggle, maybe get one rep will be a PB for a lot of them. And then we're going to have other athletes that can get double figures. It's going to be a real mix, and the real key to being successful in this event is to not have a bad event. Event, so we have Aisha and Melanie, Ireland and USA. Aisha approaching the log there. Good, easy, clean. And a good, successful list there for Aisha. So six reps were the most we saw in the under 64 category. The same weight here. How close to six reps can these ladies get? I think we'll see over six reps in this class. This isn't a weight restricted category, so we can add a bit more body weight onto the frames, which does help in these static events. Aisha there is on three or four so far. I apologize for not knowing the exact numbers on repetitions. Now, just to be clear, we are seeing what you are seeing at home. So we've got no rep count. We're simply going off looking at, in this case, two athletes, what could be four athletes, and trying to work out what the referee is giving them. Then we get confirmation at the very end of the group, and we'll confirm the runners and riders in the under 64. So in the under 64 kilogram category, we had seven competitors who managed to get a rep, one of whom was Gillian Funk. So it turns out singing a national anthem helps you with your log. <laughs> We had five athletes who managed two or more. And three athletes who all tied with six reps. That was Shannon Clifford from England, Ryan Lovelace from England, and Kate Connolly from England. Wow, that's impressive. And significantly, Loz, you were speaking about the importance of the least worst week event. Well, of the best part of 20 competitors there, S only seven of them getting points, but to get this any This is points. the issue when you don't, you don't score you zero. Exactly. So just that one rep giving you 13 points, that's big for what we've got coming up. That is big. So our next four athletes approaching the log. A good solid rep there. And the best hair we've seen so far. Yes, definitely. Sam and Carrie. <laughs> this, this is one happy lady there.
So much support coming from the back, from fellow athletes cheering on all the ladies. Just couldn't quite get that one there. Under 10 seconds to go for one more rep. Can she get it? Just couldn't get it fixed into the rack position. Three, two, one. She's a happy lady though. <laughs> She's thanking the referee there. Carrie-Anne absolutely delighted. I often find it quite interesting, the footwear people go for. Sometimes you see Converse, sometimes you see weightlifting shoes. It all comes down to personal preference. I, mean, I was always one of those athletes that liked the weightlifting shoes. I used to get a lot of leg drive. Uh, you know, if, if an athlete's explosive, they tend to use the Olympic lifting shoes. The athletes that are a little bit more shoulder and tricep dominant, they can get away with a flatter shoe. But it all comes down to personal preference, what you feel more comfortable with in the environment. In terms of approach with this, Lars, would you go down the route of you want to, if you're going to go for eight reps, would it be I'm going to clean it and try and get four, put it down, clean and go for four again, or how would you approach it? Uh, it kind of comes down to your training. You, you kind of have a good idea of what you're capable of. You know, if you think you're going to get seven to eight reps in that time limit, you don't really have a huge amount of time. 60 seconds isn't huge, so you really don't want to be putting it down. Whereas if it's a, it's a, it's a bigger weight for you, and maybe one to two reps is your limit, it's a good idea to get that rep, put the log down, take a breather, step back, and then go again. But obviously for the best athletes, they've just got to stand there and bang out as many reps as possible. And that's exactly what they're doing in our third group here. Kelly, Christy, T, and Jessica. Ooh. A little... Um, Looks like we may have had an unfortunate injury there. And we had Kelly getting a, a good rep. That may have been, I hope T's okay there. I'm not sure quite what happened if perhaps sort of the log maybe landed on her foot. It's interesting to see there's no mats down. Normally you've got like a bumper kind of mats that the logs go down on. They're just going off the, the bigger bumper plates, which give only an inch or two clearance under the toes and talking about footwear so T there the injured athlete she I believe is wearing the open toe that's, a, that's an interesting choice it wouldn't be my personal choice of footwear but like I said it, it comes down to, to what you're comfortable in but normally the, the, the main choices you see are the Olympic lifting shoes or sometimes Converse yeah well ho hopefully she's okay and hopefully she can carry on again she's got support from her fellow athletes so it's lovely to see so many smiles lots people coming out here they are so excited to be competing it's just fantastic to see USA. Kelly Jones from the USA I think it's also worth pointing out it's kind of stating the obvious but when we talk about USA it's easy to think of USA like the UK but actually, for many of these guys, they had to get on planes to come here. Even if you are a Floridian, you've had to travel quite a long uh, way to come here. Absolutely. It's a massive, massive country. Here we go with our next four athletes. I still think at the moment, Asha is in, um, Asha, sorry, is in the lead. Solid. <laughs> Might not be for long, looking at this performance here, very confident lifting. Kelly looking strong. Good solid lockout again. She has not moved her feet once, and Erin just applauding. Can Kelly get another rep there? So Kelly Jones here, really putting the afterburners onto the log lift. She recovered it. really see how big these logs are but then going to support her athletes as well once these other athletes they know they can't get any more reps they're going to cheer on other athletes great to see and Lars with the thickness of these logs how hard is it bringing your elbows that much further forward to try and press in that suboptimal position yeah like I said earlier it's very different to pressing on a bar you see people on a bar they're very upright elbows and wrists are in line You've really got to try and squeeze the elbows together to, 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 to make sure your chest muscles inflate. It gives you a little bit more surface area to press off when you're driving hard with the legs. 
you'll see a lot of the athletes that try and get their elbows high and then squeeze together. That's the optimum position then to drive hard with the legs, get as much out of your body as possible. So it goes to show even more just how impressive Rhiannon's performance was because not only is she dealing with a very thick log, but actually her relatively short limbs make it even more challenging. Yes and no. Okay. You know, the, her, her shorter limbs make it a little bit easier in terms of pressing movements. And as you can see, she, she, required, she relied more on that tricep and shoulder strength. But to get six reps is always impressive no matter what. That's why we have you here, mate. Always a fountain of knowledge when it comes to working out the optimal biomechanics on this one. Four more athletes. Kiki taking a bow there from Norway. Log is not her favourite lift. Chloe, so friendly, but so competitive as well. Now you, you'll notice that some of the guys, the volunteers, are actually walking the cars back themselves. Fair play to them. They don't want to do that too many times. It'll get tiring. <laughs> Without so we've got our first two athletes in the Masters ladies, Melanie Costantino and Sue Taylor Franklin from Wales. Come on, ladies. So the two-way competition. From the position that we're in, Loz, we can kind of see possibly not the correct technique when it's coming to foot placement there. Yeah, um, so they're just struggling a little with the, the initial lift, losing balance a little quickly. I think maybe she's just not quite under the center of the, the car, just losing her balance, almost stepping backwards there. I would also personally would have gone for maybe some different footwear. What are they? They're almost from this angle, they look almost slippers-like. Can't tell 100% what she's wearing, but I, I always like like a walking shoe for this type of event. Some people prefer different footwear. I always got them well with a solid walking shoe. They look like bodybuilding trainers on the Yeah, stones. they do, which tend to be quite you know thin and flat, sole-based. When you did your world record, I have to say, I, I'm not going to say the company's name, the brand that you were wearing that day, but they They, they should it. have sponsored me, really, shouldn't they? They should have. <laughs> could not get better advertising than that. <laughs> So, with a little bit of mental arithmetic here, we have now got our top six overall. Now, if we go from sixth to fifth, or sixth to first rather, we have Holly McRae from Canada in sixth with 23 points. In fifth, we have Christine Matthews with 24 points. But we're going to hold fire and leave you on tenterhooks as we comment it on the next event. So, we have our next group of athletes. Maria, Christy, T and Marvi. Again, it's just showing how challenging this event is. All four of these ladies struggling. Lane number two, we have Christy from the USA, just nice and steady. She's keeping small steps, just eating up the ground slowly. Goes down. Again, but she's got a good lead on the other three athletes. She can finish this. She just needs to compose herself. Deep breath, rebrace, get the car up, and then start those small, steady paces again. The small steps, just edging closer to that finishing line. Now, this is the same weight as with women's under 64 kilogram category, quarter of a ton. There we go. So Christ, that Christy moved really well then, but she just once she went down, she was unable to make that lift again. And it, it, as we said, it's a huge weight just to lift on your back. You know, she put in a big effort, was nice and steady, got well ahead of the other. <laughs> lane one, Erin Williams. Lane two, Sandra Hager. Lane three, Kiki Beryl Johnson. And lane four, Janet McCall. We've got a real impressive performance here from Erin and Sandra, both going very well. Kiki, sorry, Kiki absolutely blitzing the course there. Very, very impressive. Janet McCraw going well. 
And in lane two, Sandra Hager just coming up to the finishing line and she gets across. And the other ladies now cheering Erin on. So much support here. And we've still a few groups to go. We've got two more groups to go. She needs to get as far as she can, pick up those points. You never know what's going to happen with the next athletes. Every meter counts. How taxing is it is re-picking up the car? That's the worst bit. If you can do this in one go, it really saves your energy. If you can be fast, get the, the car walk or the yoke done in under 15, 20 seconds, it's so much more... It doesn't tax your body as badly. If you are under that car for 60 to 75 seconds trying to re-pick it up, lift it again and again and again, it drains your body and it becomes very, very taxing. I think as well, you often talk about the idea of a one-day show versus two events per day the issue is your central nervous system how are you going to feel the following day when you wake up how well two of these athletes have got points on the doors from the log press only six athletes overall managed to get any reps whatsoever in log so this could be crucial and they are off so lane number two, Samantha McLean from Great Britain are going very well, nice and steady. It's a little what? bit like watching an Arabian derby, this. <laughs> Look at this, she's well ahead of the field. Can she finish in one go? She needs go to keep on. going, stay steady, stay steady, keep those Hold feet it. moving. Hold keep it. those feet moving. Hold it. She can do this, come on, finish it in one go. And yes. she does, excellent. Yes. She's going to be very pleased with that you could see the car was starting to move all over the place she managed to compose herself stay on her feet stay upright with the car brilliant brilliant performance from Kerry Ann Davis she got 13 and a half points from the log those were crucial extra points that she picked up in the car and immediately gets out of the car and cheers on her fellow competitor Sam Taylor, the pride of Wales. What I've been most impressed with at this event so far is in the entire day is the diversity of countries. It really just isn't UK, Canada, America. This is all four corners of the globe. Yeah, we're seeing so many places represented, which is just so good to see. And look at Aisha Ulla here in lane number three, absolutely sprinting with this car. This is rapid. Wow, what a performance there by Aisha. That will challenge Chloe's time. Really impressive time. We've got Kelly Jones coming in nicely in lane number four. Sam Taylor getting closer and closer to the finish line. Come on, Sam, finish is strong. Up you get, come on. Needs to dig deep now and get across that finishing line. Crucial points. Steady steps, keep it moving. It's a horrible feeling when those legs start turning to jelly and you just don't feel like you've got any power left. She needs to take, make a deep breath now. Brace the Let's core go. and take small steps. It's there. Just get over that finishing line. One last effort. One, this is painfully close. That's the time, just shy of the finishing line there for Sam but wow Aisha's time we need to get a hold of that she was definitely close to Kiki's time of 1481 we will wait for the official results now but that was impressive just a quick reminder as well as things stand after the log Aisha is in joint first place with Kelly Jones of the USA with 17 and a half points and then sharing third and fourth together Sam Taylor and Jessica Rush so that race will really put the cat amongst the pigeons. Good afternoon. Hello and welcome to the 2021 official Strongman Games. We come to you live from Daytona Beach in Florida. It is day two. Day one was an absolutely special set of events. We saw some fantastic strong men and strong women from around the world. In fact, over 22 countries represented here. Yesterday we saw the log press. We also saw the harbor today. We're about Just to see the dead ever. I'm joined by Big Loz himself, Lawrence Charlie, and we've got another fantastic day ahead, mate. 
Rhiannon was lightning and brutally strong. Yeah, we will bring you the official results as soon as we have them, guys. But now we are moving on to the Masters athletes. Krasinska versus Barros. Currently got two and three points respectively from the log press and from the car walk. Would love nothing more than to get some more points, more scores Look on at the, the doors. Effort. <laughs> Just giving 100% there. And now cheering on her fellow competitor. Let's remind ourselves these athletes are under 64 kilos in body weight. Three, two, one. Radzi, what do you think of the, the, the deadlift method? Do you like seeing just the different oh, bars laid out and just moving on to the next one? I, the thing I love about this is it's challenging so many elements of strength. It's, you've got an element of strength endurance, you've got the mental side of the fact that it's getting heavier, and then how you approach it. So we saw Rhiannon, who kind of ran between each of the bars. Some people prefer to walk and compose themselves. I think of, say, Benedict Magnus when he used to lift his world records. He used to almost run at the bar, so he'd, he'd have been pretty good at this. But yeah, it's, it's really fascinating. And especially, when do you bring the straps out? Indeed, do you at all? Yeah, I mean, if you're good enough and you can get through them all without the straps, it is going to save you time. You have to, as the athlete, you've got to make that judgment call. Is my grip strong enough to do this without the use of the wrist straps? Pull, pull. Good job. Solid lockout there. Good for her. And again, you're looking at the different, you know, athletes that are competing. Some of them, they, they'll have aspirations of finishing this. Others will be looking to hit PBs. You know, it's, you've all got numbers in your head. They've all got different challenges that they are approaching and aiming for. Well, Davis is currently in fifth, in sixth place. <laughs> Kelly is currently in fifth place overall. These lifts... This attempt is massive for both women. Kelly knew in the centre there. They Ten both need seconds. this. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. Look at that. Three, Davis. Two, one. In lane number one there, just sneaking ahead on that fourth lift. She timed that perfectly. And she made it look so smooth. It was a lovely pull. In lane one, it was a solid pull, it didn't decelerate at any point, and she was absolutely delighted with that. And again, you can't quite see on the camera there, just below frame, you saw the real embrace between the athletes, New and Kerry Ann, really celebrating together. It's lovely to see. I'll be curious to know, Lars, how they're feeling waking up after yesterday. For many of these women, it's the first time competing at an event like this. Yeah, they're going to be sore. Yes. You know, their bodies will be feeling it. They all gave 100% effort on every event yesterday. Uh, that, that car walk really took it out of them. But they're here to give their absolute best. And look how easy that was for Taylor Franklin. It's USA versus USA versus Wales. Melanie Constantino. The Welsh lady is proving that she is a deadlifting machine. Look how easy she is treating these heavy bars. Oh, with and contempt. still going through strong. Her grip looks really strong as well. Not going no for the straps. straps in sight. I don't think she needs the straps. This is Here. going up. Here we go. Here we go. The second one to do it. She does. Hard with the left oh. Gets the down signal. Absolutely brilliant time there. The second woman we've seen do it today. The first woman we've seen from the Masters category. What a performance from the Welsh woman. And the first lady to go through the whole run without using straps. Yes. Ten seconds. Three, two, one. Loz, can we also talk about another element of the equipment we're seeing there um, from Williams underneath her sort of slightly modified T-shirt? What is that? So she's wearing oh, a, a super suit, a deadlift suit, which you'll see a lot of the athletes two, wearing. You often two, see it for the maximum lift. Three. Keeps the body tense and safe but it also allows to create a little bit more power off the floor when you're deadlifting 
some athletes really like them, some don't. You see, someone like myself, I never got on with them. I found it was really hard to breathe in the bottom of the deadlift. But what you do find is it does give you a little spring off the, off the initial lift off the floor. And also the compression around your hips just keeps you a little safer, keeps you feeling a bit more protected when you're using these you know, superhuman weights. So it's one thing to do that for a single rep. It's another thing to do it for multiple, for multiple reps and then moving with it. Moving, exactly. Thing. You know, you can't, you can't run so freely in a deadlift suit. So you've got to decide beforehand whether you want to work on speed or you're just looking to, to lift the most that you can. If you're looking to get through this quickly, being in without a suit is going to be more effective. We have another of our British athletes, Sam Taylor here. That was rapid and look how easy these are going up very strong lift there by Taylor she's going nice and steady oh look how easy these reps are moving I get all oh, the straps are coming out now and not the figure of eight straps no she's going for the standard straps I prefer the standard straps I prefer them Gets herself locked in. And time to spare. And oh, here we go. The deadlift is locked out. She throws the weight down. Big muscle pose. Well done. Sam Taylor. Great lifting. That is how you do it. Jessica Rush giving this big mammoth bar one final pull. And Loz, we've mentioned the word mammoth a few times here. You sometimes hear elephant bar get mentioned. This isn't an elephant bar. It's a mammoth bar. What does that mean? It's mammoth. <laughs> I, do you know what? I've never ever pulled on a mammoth bar before, so I didn't really know the difference. Uh, so I just went out and had a go, and I, I attempted that last deadlift. Um, and it, it really rocks and moves as you pull. You get a lot of shake through the bar. It can it can throw athletes off. You know, if you if you don't get that bar over your knees quick enough, it'll whip up and whip back down and pull you down with it. So you need to try and get that bar over the knees as quick as possible. Then you can use the flex to a little bit of an advantage. So as it goes down and flexes back up, then you can focus on get driving the hips through as quick as possible. But you need to time it right, and you need that power off the floor. It is a 10-foot bar, which means it's longer. Uh, and so to your point about getting the timing right, the, the point of pulling is actually later. That's it. Lift number one, 315 pounds. It's McLean and McGraw, the battle of the mucks right now. It's America versus GB. Can McLean get this? 30 seconds left. Cool. She has time. She's getting herself strapped in. Needs a big effort now. Just couldn't quite get it high enough. Look at that effort. That was so close to getting the bar over her knees. Their backs, are, you know, as you said yesterday, they had a long, hard day. Their backs are going to be stiff. It's not nice to go in deadlifting with a you know, stiffness in your back and your legs and your glutes. It's very different when you're deadlifting fresh in the gym to then coming in competition and having to deadlift as the third, fourth, fifth event, whatever it could be. So in case you are new to the format we have here, so yesterday and today act as semi-finals. There are four events, two yesterday, two today. At the end of today, the athletes we whittled down from whatever number is in their group to just 10 per group. They will then transition to the Sunday's finals. So today, as much as anything else, obviously they'll have eyes on the podium for some of these guys, eyes on titles for some of these guys, but it's also about making that top 10 cut. Aisha Ulla there, closest to the camera. Kiki Beryl Johnson in the middle, and Kelly Jones on the far end. Look how easy that first rep was for Ulla. Easy second rep. Moving quick, moving fast between reps. Locks in. There's no straps in sight. She is going to go through this. She's a confident lady. She did exceptionally well yesterday in the car walk. Locks out rep number four. This is the fastest so far, I think. Can she pull this mammoth? 470 kilo, 470 pound bar. Yes, she can. 
Very, very impressive there by Aisha Ula. Aisha Ula came into this event as a leader by two points. I think she may have just extended her lead. Kelly Jones. Means business. Two points behind her. Kiki going for deadlift number four here. Just too much today. But wow, what a performance there by Aisha. Also, one thing you mentioned yesterday was the fact that sometimes you've got to know where your limit is and think, I'm going to save something for a little bit later on. She could have had a go. She could have possibly fatigued herself further. We've got the sandbag toss later, which is going to be a very similar motion. Yeah, you don't want to kill yourself for, for no benefit. You know, if you, can, if you can get that rep out and it's going to make a difference to the overall score, then by all means, keep trying. But... On a deadlift, once that power goes, it goes. Now, what's surprising is we're seeing one athlete there with knee wraps on, knee sleeves, which I would have thought might actually be a not that advisory. Yeah, you don't want anything too tight around the knees. If it's just knee sleeves, might be not too bad. You don't want knee wraps, that's for sure. 175 And this is where it helps being Tom Stoltman. <laughs> having, having arms like an albatross. So Barry is really struggling with that sandbag. But the Hoosevelt Stone be carried by Bergen. Very Bergen effectively. On to the drag now, and this, as we've mentioned, is where it's all won and lost. You have to get it moving, and you've got to keep it moving. That's the key. You don't really want to do this stop-start type move. There we go. She's moving her feet now. If she can keep driving hard with every single step, you need to keep applying power every time that foot goes down into the ground. Drive hard. Keep pushing through the toe, through the heel, and keep leaning back. You don't need to look forward. You can lean back, look up in the air, use that body weight, and just keep those legs driving every single step. Three, Much easier said two, than done because the legs will be burning. They will feel like they're on fire. So again, kudos to Clifford for what she had come... <laughs> oh, great camaraderie. <laughs> kudos to Clifford for what she accomplished because she did that at 10 kilos lighter than the ladies we're seeing there and still managed to get the sled moving. Judges ready. The ready. We are ready. Maria Kristinska in lane number one from England. Moving well with the sandbag. So we're seeing a, a variety of body shapes here. Kristinska, the first in depth on her. Who's the fellow? That's 175 pounds. I mean, just the carrying the Husseva and the, the sandbag alone would have your lungs burning. You will be breathing hard after those first two implements. Just trying to get it set how she wants. Here we go then. All about the drag. Okay, who's got Stefanik it? Stefanik in the middle going nicely, keeping the sled moving. Stefanik definitely has time to cross the line. She definitely has time. Go on, Christy. She's got to keep pumping those legs. She's doing very well here. Methodical. Come from behind from the sandbag and the Hoosville stone, but she's moving well here. She's got to have to pick up the pace slightly. Just needs to keep it going. Keep every inch that you can cover is going to be crucial. I wonder how many places will be separated by just a few metres. I think we may see a good number. Now, as soon as we get the results for the under 64 women, we'll of course give those to you because after that performance from Clifford, things may have changed on the podium as things stand. And crucially, we'll give you up the update on who has made the top 10 cut because that will be the last of, that we'll see of a number of the athletes of under 64 kilograms women. Our third group out in lane 
we've seen how well Kiki's done. These are the, the type of events that suit Kiki. She likes the athletic, more traditional strong man, strong woman type events. She was exceptional on the car walk. Let's see what she's like at the low and drag. Kiki's height, a big advantage here. Take long strides, gets the sandbag loaded, sprints back. She's got that long wingspan, no issues with the Husafel stone. And just a reminder, Loz, Higa and Williams are 11th and 12th. They need a good performance here to stay in this competition, to stay in the official strongman And game. look at this by Beryl Johnson. She is flying with this drag. This is impressive, look at this. We've seen so many athletes struggle with this implement. She is eating up the course quickly. Still over 20 seconds to go. She's gonna finish no problem at all. And then, brilliant, absolutely brilliant and not even gassed. She's tired, but she's not destroyed. Hager, though, is performing exceptionally well. You said she's in a battle here, needs to do well. She's crossed the finish line. That could be very important when we look at the top 10 after this event. She was 11th coming into this, three points separating her and 10th place. But that puts her as one of the very few women to have crossed the line and completed that event. So who knows what that will mean when it comes to the final cut. We'll keep you updated just as we will with the under 64 kilogram category women. With eight athletes still to go, she's going to be watching intently in our next two heats. Now, interestingly, Kelly New, who didn't cross the finish line, she is in ninth going into that event. So there was an awful lot on the line to make the cut there. So and there we have two women who know each other pretty well. <laughs> the time to beat. But really, for a lot of these, it's all about that top 10 cutoff. Let's bring out our next heat now. In lane one, it's McLean. In lane two, it's McGraw. Lane three, Davis. Lane four, Rush. Okay, and we're off. McGraw, Davis versus Rush. Well, and G Janet McGraw in lane two. She is currently in 10th position. She needs a good performance to hold that position and keep her in the competition. She's being steady on this Husserfer carry. It all comes down, as we've mentioned so far, to this sled drag. This is where the effort needs to go. 100% effort now. She's going to have to pull hard. Struggling to break the line. In lane number one there, Samantha McLean moving very nicely. Just comes to the stop and she's moving again. Got to keep those feet going. Tr don't let it stop. Janet McGraw making some progress now, though. Will it be enough? And she's got it moving, finally. In lane number one as across the finish line. Lane number four, Jessica Rush going very well. Wow. Now, did McGraw do enough there, do you think? She came back strong towards the end. 
We've had some brilliant performances. McLean crossing the finish line. She's in seventh going into this. I mean, <sighs> separating ninth and tenth, half a point. Separating tenth and eleventh, three points. But we saw what Sandra Heger did. She put in an absolute shift. This could go right to the wire. One group left in our Masters class before we go on to our U.C. So our next athletes will be our top four from the deadlift event. Kelly Jones, Sam Taylor, Sue Taylor Franklin, and Aisha Ola. Aisha absolutely dominating this contest so far. Yeah, she is. In fact, two of those people you mentioned there, they are in the top four overall anyway, in the form of Sam Taylor, who's third, and Aisha Allah, who's hardly put a foot wrong. Where is Sue Taylor? Because she was, she did exceptionally well in the deadlift. So Sam Taylor's third. Sue Taylor Franklin is in seventh. All right, the field is set for so she needs to still put in a good performance here to guarantee that top ten position. In fact, we've got the top three and seventh. Top so three this and seventh in this heat. And we've also just had the results in for the women's, what I can only presume is the women's under 70, under 82 kilograms. Kelly Jones in lane number one. Sam Taylor in lane number two. Sue Taylor Franklin, Wales, lane number three. And Aisha Ulla from Ireland in lane number four. And it's Sam Taylor into an easy first. Sambag puts her into the lead. She's sprinting back to the Hoosier Fellstone. Just took her time, making sure you get those hands in the right position, but she's moving well again. Loads the Hussefell stone, and now it's coming down to the drag. Here we go. How Our much do they want it? Overall, currently all moving well. Ulla. Taylor in lane two. Jones in lane one. All three of these athletes doing exceptionally well. Can all finish. Sue Taylor Franklin needs to really keep dragging this sled. She needs to get more distance to make sure she overtakes a few of the other ladies that have been so far. Sam Taylor finishes in first place. Ulla finishes second. Jones finishes. Very strong heat from these ladies. And now she has given it everything there. Taylor Franklin on the floor exhausted. Has she done enough to secure a top 10 position and make it through to day three? Very impressive performance there by Sam Taylor. She'll be very pleased with herself. All the athletes embracing. And as always, we'll bring you the overall results as soon as we have them for the Masters. But once again, we move up. Kiki being announced as the winner there. Yeah, so if we talk, for example, about the, the next uh, category, which is the Women's Masters. So we know the 10, but in terms of the top three lots, I think we know possibly who's going to, certainly the favourite so far to win, Aisha Allah, six-point lead. But the battle for second and third, we don't know in which order that's going to be. It's a real tight battle for uh, Kelly Jones and Sam Taylor there in second and third. And Aisha, although she's well ahead, still needs a solid performance. You know? it's, it's not unassailable, she's still catchable for the girls behind it's going to come down to no mistakes for her and when we talk about being close in the under 73s first and second not so much as a flare of a nostril between these guys Jodie Kennedy and Erin Murray 
36 points apiece. How much pressure are they going to feel going into this event? They're going to be feeling it big time. I mean, the under, under 73 is a new class, and it's really been a popular one. A lot of athletes competing in that class. Very, very impressive performances. Right well, just now. as McCraw makes her way over, just a quick reminder, Lars, it's something that you pointed out to me. I didn't realise this. So it's not a case of you take the points that you've accumulated over the past four events. There is essentially an edit and a calculation done beforehand. Yes, so they've stripped out the points from the, all the athletes that have been removed now. So however they placed those points have been pulled out and they've scored it as if there was only 10 athletes competing throughout the whole contest now. Otherwise, it would have been unfair to, if, if you could have picked up 30 points in event one to four, but only 10 points in event uh, five and six. It wouldn't be fair on the athletes. So they've tried to strip out all the points from the athletes that have been eliminated. And we are left with only the scores from the athletes that have competed all the way through. So ostensibly what that means is if you imagine there were 20 athletes in a group, that if you come first, you get 20 points. If you came last, you get one point, providing that you rep. So, if, for example, on that particular event, the athlete that came second and third happens to not qualify for the final, you'd have an athlete coming first with 20 points, 19 points and 18 points would essentially be redundant. The athlete that got 17 points would now be moved up and promoted to that 19 point mark. But it wouldn't be 19 points now because it's now out of 10. So the 20 athletes, has 10 points, and the athlete that came fourth would actually be given nine points because they're now second. That's correct. If that makes sense to you at home, <laughs> you need to apply for countdown because uh, you are a cleverer man than I. But hopefully that's shed some light on it. Yeah, it's a little confusing, but it is the fairest way for the athletes remaining, other than you start from scratch again. It's the Kevin fairest way. Well, here we go, 73s. It is the Masters, 40 plus women. Kerry Ann Davis versus Sue Taylor Franklin from Wales. Wow, that was powerful. That was so powerful. I think she's trying to knock the platform over. Just needs to release a tiny bit higher. She's got the power. She's just got to release that little bit higher. She's going too far, throwing backwards. Got to get the height. There we go, much better, and it flies over once she gets that rhythm. Unbelievable power. There you go, it's got so much power. But she's already done two or three throws that have wasted energy, and there's another one. It's almost like she's holding on to the, hand, the handle just a tiny bit too long. Yes. There we go, that's another one over. And Sue Taylor Franklin from Wales onto the last sandbag. Got time, needs a big effort. She's happy with the six. Ooh. That's a shame there for Kerry Ann because she had plenty of power. I think with a little practice on that, she could be very good actually. Just needs to master the technique, the practice, and I think she'll come back much better next time. That was colossal amounts of power. Samantha McLean versus Jessica Rush. And away we go. Ah, oh. very easy for the first two. Almost in unison. Oh! just came down a little early. Both having one had made one mistake so far. Jessica Rush now into her rhythm. Good throw there. Two bags left each. So frustrating when it goes high enough, but it doesn't go over. And that snuck and that over. That one was perfectly thrown. Just crept over. 35 pounds for Rush. Will anyone get all six? She was tempted to catch it and then thought better of it. <laughs> it's often an event where people watching back home, they see these it's like kegs or sandbags coming back down. You do not want them hitting you. Well, I thought Evan Singleton was doing some uh, some training recently, and uh, that's exactly what happened to him. 
it, it came back. I think it was a med ball he was throwing, and he came and hit him on the back, and even Evan Singleton felt that one. <laughs> Actually, was, I've got some athletes that I train, and they were training this event. <laughs> the two brothers are trained together. And one of them was retrieving the sandbags for the other brother. He didn't look. And one of them threw the, the sandbag over and it hit his brother and knocked him to the floor. Ooh. How Luckily, much weight? <laughs> it's about the same weight as these, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> 35, 40 pounds. And You're going to feel that? <laughs> yeah. Luckily he was okay, but it was quite funny watching the video. So Kiki has plenty of height. This could be a really good event. For Kiki from Norway. Sam Taylor's done exceptionally well this weekend. Welsh athlete battling for the podium. I think Kiki's about six foot three. She's a very tall lady. Oh, Look at that. Just use her arms there. Arms and height. Wow. She's not really driving through the hips and the legs powerfully, but she's got so much height, powerful arms. One swing. But this is looking impressive. Down. Look at this. Oh. Throwing them over like they're nothing. Already on to the six bag. Down. 30 and pounds. One and it goes over. Can she be the first athlete to do the 35 pound bag? Composes herself. Big swing. Oh. And Burley Johnson is level. And Sam Taylor is on to the last bag as well. Kiki just needs to apply a little bit more hip power. She's got the height. She's got the leverage. Oh! Sam so close there. Last chance for Kiki. Oh! Two times that bag just balances on the top. Decides to come back the wrong side. Great performance from both ladies. We were so close to seeing that 35 pound bag go over the bar. Just was not to be. And Burley Johnson, just smooth, calm, collected. My goodness, that was tough. Those first few bags, you just made them so easy. Is our leader, Aisha Ulla, from Ireland. Can she become the Masters World Champion for 2021? And it's important to remind ourselves that this is the World Championships. Every single athlete that wins the title here can say, I am the strongest man or strongest woman in my division in the world. Kelly Jones, USA versus Aisha Ulla from Ireland. Oh and my goodness. Are launching those first bags. 20 pounds is not an issue. 25 pounds now. I'll tell you Both what. Both of them flying over. Jones is launching these. This is fast. For 30 pounds. First mistake made. And Aisha gets it over. So does Jones. They are both onto the 35 pound. Oh, what's that 35 pound? No one's managed to I do it yet. Someone will hear. Oh, I thought that was it. Come on, Aisha. Oh, Kelly Jones, compose herself. One seconds. more effort. Take your time. Problem is now that energy is gone. You lose that explosive power very, very quickly, Radzi. You can see that. You can really see it. I think fresh, both of these ladies could do the 35 pound, no problem. Just exhausted at this point. We've already done four brutal events, three days of long competition. He just burst into tears. We <laughs> just saw it on camera there as well. Wow. I'm... Look at that face. She just can't contain it. And that is what this is all about. And this is what I mean by you never know what's going to happen in Strongman. Rhiannon was in such a strong position. Atlas Stones, one of her favourite events. You just never know what's going to happen. Shannon Clifford, under 64 kilo world champion. And that ultimately came down. So it happens again. So Rhiannon came ninth. The same thing that happened to Camby. And that makes a massive difference. There was a turnaround of nine points there. Incredible. So look at this. Taylor Franklin is on the last stone. We've not seen this stone loaded so far today. She's got 10 seconds to do this. She cannot quite get underneath it to pull it up to her lap. 275 pounds. 
Do you know what, Loz? I'll tell you what, it's been such a wonderful three days and to see it culminate like this, and it's so, so close. Uh, well, we just keep saying it. So many of the categories are so tight. Yes. You just don't know what's going to happen. That was, you know, Rhiannon had a lead. She really did have a lead. She would have felt confident going into it. I'm sure she's going to be devastated. Yeah, she, she must be. Um, because four stones, I mean, for somebody who's lifted so well and it shows us to look at every single class i mean aisha ulla has a good lead but you just don't know i have to say i hope you're enjoying this at home because we're we, we certainly absolutely loving being here it's a real oh, privilege yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's also showing stars and names that we can look out for in the future i've loved it just seeing these different faces that i'm not used to seeing we're used to seeing the big guys you know but some of these lighter weight categories some of the women's categories they are doing incredible things and so many interesting and popular characters as well coming through. Now, I've got to be honest, guys, in all this drama, I'm not even sure where we are. So we are on to Samantha McLean and Jessica Rush in the over 40s women's. Four athletes go so far. No one has yet managed to lift that six stone. Rush looking really good through four there. That's somebody who's drilled this. You can see the way she yep. preps. Arms go over the top, drives through the hips, rolls the stone up the body, nice lift. She's got a chance of this. And look Here at this, it's up to her lap. She will adjust the hands, go over the top of the stone. Hit it, hit Come it, on, hit, hit, hit it, She's hit got it. it. Push it on, push yeah. it on. There we go. Our first athlete to lift all six stones. That will have felt like an eternity. What a way to finish. Congratulations there. What a way to finish. That's how you want to finish a show, lifting all the stones. And both women delighted. So, Loz, now it comes down to the final four. Now, there's a fair bit of spacing, actually, of all the groups. This is one of the most clear in terms of we have a clear first place. Yeah, a first place, place actually cannot be caught. So, Aisha Ulla, seven and a half points in the lead. She just needs to load one stone to pick up one point. So she has an unassailable lead. But Kelly Jones is in second. Sam Taylor is in third. Only four, five points behind. We've seen it can be done. Stranger things have happened. What, what Sam Taylor in particular needs is just no disasters. Yeah, if Sam Taylor could finish on the podium here, she's going to be over the moon. But something almost told me that was the attitude that Rhiannon had. It was don't make any major mistakes, and it just then didn't seem to go right for her. Kiki's so tall. Kiki oh. likes these type of events. Kiki isn't the most powerful when it comes to the powerlifting movements, but the mobile events, the lifting awkward objects, she really excels at these type of things. And look at that, first three stones up. No problem at all. She could conceivably be the fastest That's overall four. there. But Sam is not far behind. Sam Taylor on the fifth stone. Kiki gets the fifth stone. And they are both onto the sixth. This is impressive stone lifting, Radzi. Look at this. It makes such a difference when the height of the final stone Kiki. is around your hips. Kiki over the moon, finishing strong. And Sam Taylor gets all six stones. Congratulations, Sam. You made it onto the podium. Look at that. She's absolutely thrilled with her performance. Watching Kiki lift is a little bit like seeing sort of a, a, a slightly early Tom Stoltman lift. <laughs> having that wingspan, having that height, such an advantage. It's a huge advantage. And she's done really well this weekend. But Sam Taylor and from you see, Wales. The bit you might have just missed then, Loz. As she walked off, she kissed her partner. There are not many sports, there are not many people that would want to be kissed by their partner as they're about to go out and compete. <laughs> So, Kelly Jones and Aisha Ulla. Aisha has been incredible this weekend, really dominated. She has an unassailable lead, but she wants to finish strong. Lift all those stones. Yes. 
Show everyone you are the dominant force in Masters Strongwoman. She's been sublime throughout the past three days. She's shown very little in the form of fatigue. And now it's about cementing everything you've done. 34.45. US She's just, just ahead on the first stone. One motion. One motion in the first two. One, One motion. motion. The third. Jones not far behind at all. Goes down this time. Make sure of it. Oh, well done. Making it. Jones gets the fifth. Can Ola finish? With all six stones going Jones. on the platform. Yes, she can. Oh, thoroughly deserving champion there. I think she's happy it's all over. Both oh. athletes lifting all stones. And look at that. Are we going to see more tears? Final heat for Masters, ladies, athletes, which means...